John 14. John 14. He that has my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me. He that loves me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. He didn't say, I'll manifest myself to the one that begs me enough or fasts long enough or prays 12 days in a row without stopping. Who's he going to reveal and manifest himself to? Those that love him. How do you know you love him? You keep his commandments. You, you do what he said. You receive what he said. You respect what he said. You remember what he said. And you practice. You do what he said. And as surely as you do that, tell me again what he said he would do when you do that and as you do that. Look at the Amplified. The Amplified, he said, I will love him. I will show, reveal, manifest myself to him. I will let myself be clearly seen. Clearly. How many like that? Clearly clearly seen, and make myself real to him. Does it get any better than Jesus revealing himself to you, letting you clearly see him and making himself real to you? Glory to God. And uh, how does this happen? doesn't happen for everybody. If you read the next verse, Judas, not, not Judas Iscariot, a different one, he said, Lord, how are you going to do this? How are you going to show yourself to us and not to the world? And basically he repeated and he said, well, if a man loves me, he's going to keep my words. And the Father will love him and I'll love him and we're going to move in with him. Amen. Make our abode. That's what it means. Make our abode. We're going to move in with him. But when you're living with somebody, you're going to run into them. Right? You're going to see them. This doesn't happen for everybody. There are millions on the planet to whom God is not real at all. As far as their concern in their life and their experience, there is no God. The, to them, there is no proof. There is no evidence that a God exists. And, and, and many of them think you and I are fools. They think we're just weak people that need a crutch of religion. But the scripture said it's the fool who says in his heart there is no God. Right. So it's not us, it's the fools. That's right, Amen. 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 But if you want God to be real to you, you can't say you don't believe in him. You can't ignore him. People say, well, if he'd reveal himself to me, then I'd believe in him. Well, if you'd believe in him, he'd reveal himself to you. <laughs> well, prove to me that God is real and I'll trust him. No, trust him and he'll prove to you. Amen. Well, I want him to do it first. Well, yeah, but you ain't God. Right. <laughs> and you, he's not going to change what he said to accommodate you and everybody else have to do it another way. No, no. Believe now, obey now by faith, and, and the Lord will make himself real to you. So let's continue our study in the book of John. Go to John 10. John 10, last week, we studied about how he is the good shepherd. John 10. Jesus said in verse 14, I'm the good shepherd. Verse 18, he talked about laying down his life for us. Verse 19, there was a division among the Jews. Many said, he has a devil. He's mad. He's crazy. Why are you listening to him? Others said, these are not the words of him that has a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? The answer is no. The devil can mess things up. He can't fix them. He's a destroyer. He's not a healer. And it was at Jerusalem, the Feast of Dedication, it was winter. Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. 
Then came the Jews round about him, and they said to him, How long do you make us to doubt? One translation says, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you be the Christ, tell us plainly. Now, why are they there talking to him? Because of all the things that have happened. The works are just getting greater. Can you see this? He told them at one point, you know, greater things than these. You'll see. Because they were all up in arms about the man getting healed at the pool of Bethesda, you remember. Well, the next thing we see, a man born blind is healed. And then right after this, we're going to see a man raised from the dead. I mean, it just keeps... I mean, God just keeps turning the power up. Yes, Keep up. turning the glory up. Amen. And that's still his will. Yes. It's his will for us. Yes. How many believe that greater things than we've seen, yes. we will see yes. in our midst, in our personal lives, in our services, in our meetings? Yes. How many believe it's the will of God to just turn it up? Turn, yes. turn it up. Turn it up. Will we give him all the glory? We, yeah. All, yeah, we know we can't do anything without him. It's him. Amen. It's him. It's he that does the works, just like Jesus said. And uh, I'm excited. I believe it. I believe it. We've seen some great things. We've had some great things happen. We've had absolutely financial miracles. Do you know it? We've had miracles with our properties, our lands, haven't we? Miracles. Somebody say miracle. Miracles. We've seen healing miracles, haven't we? I mean, we've had all kinds of things happen. Broken bones put back together. People healed of cancer. And ears open and eyes open. We've had all kinds of things happen. Somebody say miracles. 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 You know who we're seeing when we're seeing this? We're seeing him. We're seeing it. We're already seeing him. But we're going to see him more. Somebody say, I believe it. He went on to say, they said, if, if you are the Christ, just tell us. Just say it plain. Jesus answered them, I told you. I told you as plain as you can say it. I already told you over and over again. And you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you believe not because you're not of my sheep. As I said to you, my sheep hear my voice. That's us. Yes. And I know them and they follow me. That's us. Amen. Somebody say, that's me. He said, and I give to them eternal life, and they shall never perish. That's me. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Oh, oh, that made him mad. Oh, that made him so mad. You know, they'd already got upset with him previously, we studied, when he kept talking about his father, my father. And they said, who is your father? And, and, and they understood he's talking about God. Oh, it made him mad. They accused him of blasphemy. And it happens again right here in an increasing measure. The Jews took up stones again. They'd done it before. To stone him. And Jesus looked at him. He said, many good works I've showed you from my father. For which one of those good works are you going to stone me now? <laughs> the Jews answered him and they said, for a good work we stone you not, but for blasphemy. Because you, being a man, make yourself God. Now, the people who saw Jesus as he walked the earth knew him as a man. They needed a revelation of him as God manifested in the flesh. Today, 
people still need a manifestation, a, a revelation of him as God. But with all of us who are believers, we need to see him as a man. We need that revelation because we already believe he's the son of God, right? right? Yes. But many do not see him as a man and therefore they attribute everything he did as him doing it with divine ability. And that would make it unavailable and unattainable to us. Amen. We need to see his humanity. Yes. We need to see him as a man because that will show us how to live. Yes. But these folk only saw him as a man. They needed to see him as the son of God. And it made them mad when he talked about being the son of God. And uh, they said, you, being a man, make yourself God. Now, notice something Jesus didn't say. He didn't say, I'm not a man. He didn't say, I, I alone have a right to say I'm the son of God. Instead of saying he was uniquely qualified to say he was the son of God, he quoted scripture that applied to them. Didn't he? Yeah. And us. Yes. What did he say? He said, Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? Yes. I said, he's quoting, I said, you are God's. Yes. They probably thought, huh? <laughs> is that in there? <laughs> what? What? You are gods. If he call them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken. Don't you like that? The scripture cannot be broken. Yes. Say ye of him whom the father has sanctified and sent into the world, you blaspheme because I said, I am the son of God. Now this has, this was such a point of contention with the religious people and leaders, particularly of Jesus' day. In fact, it was what they used to justify killing him. This right here. Hold your place here and go to the 19th chapter and you'll see what I'm talking about. 19, verse 4, when Jesus had come before Pilate, he brought him out and, and, and said to them, he said, I want you to know I don't find any fault in this man. And Jesus came forth wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said, behold the man. The chief priest, therefore, an officer saw him and they cried out, crucify him. Crucify him. Is there hatred in their voice? Yes. Certainly. You want to kill somebody. Pilate said to them, you take him and crucify him. I find no fault in him. He said, I don't want anything to do with this. I didn't find anything wrong with him. You want him killed, you kill him. And the Jews answered and said, we have a law. And by our law, he ought to die. Why? Because he made himself the son. Why? Because he made himself the son of God. That was the justification they used for killing him. Now we know that the whole thing was the plan of God. God was using it. But this was in their mind. Why were they so enraged? Why were they so incensed? Why were they full of hatred? Who does he think he is? Saying God's his father. Saying he's the son of God. Now, a lot of people would think, well, he is the son of God. And he alone was quite, he, he didn't say that. He could have said, I am uniquely qualified to say this. I'm born of a virgin. He didn't say it. You know what he said? He said, what do you mean? What's the problem? Me saying God's my father. It's written in your scripture. Your Bible you thump and carry around with you. It's written, I said, you are God's. And if that's true, then how am I blaspheming? Because I said I am the Son of God. 
Now this has been a thing that people have debated about and people have gotten so mad about. I know uh, Phyllis and I had the privilege of traveling with uh, Brother Kenneth Hagin and, and his team were part of his team. We were a part of his team, I'm trying to say. And uh, one of the first meetings he took us on and allowed me to speak in was up in Seattle, Washington. And uh, we were so glad to be there. And we were in the car with them. And we're coming in, uh, I think it was the first uh, service. And uh, we came around the corner. And man, there were people all over the place marching with signs. I thought, what is going on here? They're in front of the church. They're blocking the drive for us to get in. And they're yelling and they're screaming and they're spitting. And they're flailing their sign. And I looked in the sign and says, ye are not gods. Ye. Had to use some King James in there, you know. <laughs> ye are not gods. Now let's just stop right there. Is that a scripture? Is that a scripture, ye are not gods? No. What is a scripture? <laughs> Who said it? Well, the Spirit of God said it through the psalmist in Psalm 82, and then Jesus quoted it and confirmed it. So Jesus said it too. If Jesus said, ye are gods, why would you go out and make you a sign that said, ye are not gods? But see, they thought these are people from other churches in the city that have come out to oppose and march against and rally against us who are supposedly some great evil some great danger. And I heard one of them talking. They, they, it, it was such a big deal. It was on the news. And I heard one of them talking. And man, they're, they can hardly talk. They're just spitting in their guy. Rawr, rawr. Ah. <laughs> and as I'm listening to them talk, I think they hadn't got a clue what Brother Hagin has ever taught about any of this. Right, yeah. Somebody said something and they said, oh, who do they think they are? And so they wanted us to know when we got to town, you are not gods. <laughs> I was taken aback. I thought, what is the deal? We come to have church. <clears throat> but you'll find that that's still with us. That was one of the biggest issues Jesus had with the religious leaders of his day, it was why it was what they used to justify in their own mind killing him. Why is it such a deal? What is the big issue? Anytime you see somebody get that upset and they use their own money to make signs <laughs> and to travel across town and stay out in the weather, I mean, why would you care? Why wouldn't you stay home and enjoy yourself? What is motivating you to do this and breathe out? This is not love. This is not peace. This is not joy. This is hatred. Where is this coming from? This has been this way from the beginning. Let me read some scriptures to you. You remember this in Genesis? The very beginning. Genesis 3, when the tempter came, he told Adam and Eve, Genesis 3, 5, he says, God does know in the day you eat thereof, you eat this fruit. Then your eyes will be open and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. This is the core of the temptation by which they fell. Of what? You shall be as gods. And you know what the sad thing about this is? They already were. 
So I said, what do you mean? In the genealogy in Matthew is given and other places about Jesus and, and, and the who begat who, you remember? So-and-so begat so-and-so begat so-and-so. And it goes all the way back to Adam. And it says, uh, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. You remember that? Are all of us descendants of Adam? What does that make us? Son of a dolphin is a dolphin. Son of a cat is a cat. A son of a man is a man. A son of God is a God. I know people don't like that. People get, oh, they, they, did you feel the quiet just then? <laughs> what are you saying? I'm reading scriptures. That's what I'm doing. And you got to make up your mind. Do you believe what Jesus said? Or are you going to believe some religious tradition? You're going to let something twist your mind. How does somebody completely ignore what Jesus said and go make them a sign? Hmm? Ye are gods, Jesus said. And so they say, ye are not gods. What did the Bible say about adding to the word? Taking from the word. See, they thought we were the great error, the great blasphemers. And they're the ones changing scriptures. And putting a knot where the Lord says you are. And posting it on a billboard and running around. Well, who's in error? This was what happened when Jesus was tempted. You remember it? Matthew 4, you don't, don't have to turn there. The tempter came and said to him, If you be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Verse 6, he said, if you be the Son of God, cast yourself down. This is a central issue, isn't it? If you're the Son of God. When he was hanging on the cross, when he was in an agony, the religious leaders gathered around him and mocked him. And they said, yeah, you said you're going to destroy the temple and build it three days. Save yourself if you be the Son of God. Come down off the cross. Others said he trusted God. Let him deliver him now. For he said, I am the son of God. That's what he said. Why are people so full of hate about this? Do you remember what the Bible says about the devil? Who wasn't created a devil, but was created an angel of light. The Bible said in Isaiah concerning Lucifer, He's the one that said in his heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend upon the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. What did he try to do? He knew the faith principles. He saw God operate up close and personal. He knew you believe it in your heart and you say it with your mouth. That's what he's trying to do. Only he's trying to do it against the will of God and against the plan of God. How many know when your words meet God's words, when the dust clears, his words will be there and you won't be. Right? Why is the devil so, I mean, it, it puts him into a rage. When you and I, any of us start talking about being the sons of God. Why? Because it's what he desired and tried to be. And it's what he now can never be. And I mean, it grieves him to his core. That's why he's always trying to get you and I 
to, to believe lies and talk about we're just worms and we're just nothing and we're no good. He does not want you seeing that you are actually a child of the living God, that you are actually in the very family of God. You're not an angel. You're in the family of God. And you're no longer just a servant, but you are a son. Oh, do you believe it, friend? Do you believe that you have been made a child of God, a son of God? We need a revelation of this. How many think we could get a greater revelation of this? We, we need a greater revelation of this. Go with me, if you would, to 1 John, the fifth chapter. Isn't this the core, the heart of the gospel, that you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God? It is. One of the most important things we could talk about. 1 John and 5. 1 John chapter 5, verse 1. Whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Is that you? And everyone that loves him that begat loves him also, also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Hallelujah. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And who is he? that overcomes the world, but he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Hallelujah. Do you believe? Jesus is not, you know, people say, well, Jesus was a good man and he taught good things and he set a good example and, you know, that's really all that matters. No, it's not all that matters. If you only believe he's a man, then you're lost. I said, you're lost. Well, I believe he's a good man, and I believe he, but you know, this virgin birth, and how could that happen, and, and all this other. No, he is the son of the living God. Yes. How many believe it? Yes. He had no earthly father. I said, that's impossible. God made human beings. <laughs> he made the planet. You can't tell him what he can't do. Jesus was conceived supernaturally without an earthly father. I said, well, you're a fool to believe that. You're a fool not to. And we'll find out here right away who's right. Everybody's going, there are no atheists in hell. You know, everybody. No matter what people think, kind of stupid stuff they believe on the earth, as soon as you die, it all comes clear. (laughs) The smart ones believe now. Do I have any smart ones in here with me this morning? They believe now. Somebody say, I believe believe that Jesus is is the the Christ. The Son Son of the living God. God. Glory Glory to God. I believe it. He was born of a virgin. He did die on the cross. He was really dead. And he was literally, physically raised from the dead and caught up to glory. And he's sitting there right now in a flesh and bone body. Glory to God at the right hand of majesty on high. And he's soon coming back. He's soon, he's going to come back. Glory. He is the son of the living God. And if you don't believe he's the son of the living God, then you're not saved. You are lost. You're in, you're in eternal jeopardy. 
And you want to get that changed right now. Amen. Right now. It's not an accident that you're here today or that you're watching us today. God's ordered your steps. Called, brought you to this place so that you wouldn't have to spend eternity with the devil. Hmm. Hell is real. Don't let people tell you it's fictitious. Hell is real. Heaven is real. Eternity is real. When you die, it's not the end at all. I'm so glad. I'm a believer. How about you? I'm so glad. Now, go with me back to the book of John. John 12 and uh, 24. Well, 23. Jesus said, The hours come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say to you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it die, it brings forth much fruit. Is he talking about himself? Yes, he is. He said the hours come. Is he getting ready to lay his own life down? Is he getting ready to plant this greatest of all seeds? Himself. Now up until this time, Jesus was uniquely the only begotten Son of God. And if he had continued, he would have continued alone, unique in that respect. Isn't that what he said? Yes. He, abide, he, he remains alone. Mm -hmm. But if this seed is planted... And if he dies, what happens when you plant a good seed? Then that seed, the seed dies. But even though it dies, it's not the end. It's the beginning of something else. And that seed produces, it actually reproduces, which means it produces itself. It reproduces itself. Yes. Oh, are you seeing this? He was the only begotten Son of God until he laid his life down. Oh, glory to God. Now he's referred to as the firstborn of many brethren. That's me and you. That's us. Well, what was he? What is he? The son of God. What are we? The sons of God. It makes the devil mad. It makes religious people crazy out of their head. So let's say it again. We are. The sons, the sons of God. Woo! And about preaching myself happy. <laughs> Hebrews 2. Well, verse 9. We see Jesus. Isn't that what this whole series is about? Yes. Seeing Jesus. Who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. Now see, that's us. Our current state is lower than the angels. But we are not lower than the angels. Our current state, condition, the Bible refers to our body's condition right now as vile, V-I-L-E. Vile. But we're told soon and very soon it's going to be changed and be made like his glorious body. <clears throat> he said that by the grace of God, he should taste death for every man. And he did. 
For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. And he did. For both he that sanctifies, that's Jesus, and they who are sanctified, that's us, are all of one. Oh, I don't know if you got that or not. <laughs> Both he who sanctifies, that's Jesus. How many of us, Jesus, what he did, and, and himself as the sacrifice that has sanctified us. Both he that sanctifies and they who are sanctified. That's you. That's me. That's all of us who have believed him are all of one. For the which cause he's not ashamed to call them brethren. Now, how are you going to say, this is my brother, but he's not really part of the family, and he's not a real human being, <laughs> but he's my brother. Can't be. If your family is Smith, then if he's your brother, he's just as much a Smith as you are. If he's not, he's not your brother. Can't have it both ways. Listen, friend, if God is your father and Jesus is your brother, what does that make you? What does that make you? Now, I don't think you need to run around hollering, I'm a God. I'm a God. Not saying that you're not. But I don't think you need to run around saying that. You'll have enough trouble as it is without saying that. <laughs> but I think you should say what Jesus said. Yeah. I am a son of God. Yes. 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 And you need to find out what that means. What does that mean? What does that make me? What kind of place do I have? What can I do? What am I to be? What's before me? What's the plan? What am I going to be doing? What is God doing with all his sons? The ladies are called sons just like the men. Say it out loud again. I am a child of God. I am, I am a, son a son of God. God's my father. God's my father. Jesus, is my Jesus is my brother. We're all of one. Am I reading the Bible? Am I reading the Bible? <clears throat> they're, they're all of one, he said. Glory to God. He's not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare your name Unto my brethren, in the midst of the church, I'll sing praise unto you. And again, I'll put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God has given me. We are his very own children. We are his very own sons. That means so much more than we know right now. Go to two places. Romans 8. And then we'll go to 1 John. I think we can close. Romans 8. The scripture says, verse 14, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are what? They are what? Sons of God. Sons of God. <laughs> this is dawning on some people. I can see it in your face. You're going, yes, I am. The devil's got trouble. I'm telling you, he's got trouble. 
Can, why would he fight so hard to keep everybody that goes, goes to church believing that they are unworthy worms? Why? How does that benefit him? Because an unworthy worm is a nobody with nothing, no rights, no privileges, no abilities, no resources. Who are you? He says, who are you? You're an ignorant nothing. You're a poor, pitiful excuse for a Christian. Just be glad you're going to make it to heaven somehow. And shut up and sit down. You're nothing. You can do nothing. Why? 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 Because when a child of God finds out who they are, the confidence that comes up in them, when they find out God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, is my father. He, he's my father. My father, my father, he claims me just like he claims Jesus. Have you read John 17 where Jesus prayed that they, that they may be one in us, I in them and them in us, and that, you may, that they may know that you've loved them like you've loved me? Have you read all that? Yes. Hold your place right here. I spoke too quick. Go to John 20. John 20. When that seed had been planted, when Jesus laid his life down, when he died, when he rose again, first opportunity anybody had to talk to him or meet him. Listen to what one of the first things he said to him. John 20, 16, Mary was there and she recognized him and she said, Rabboni, which is to say master. Verse 17, Jesus, he, he just rose from the dead. He's only come from the tomb a few feet. It's just happened. He hadn't been to glory yet. And he told her, touch me not, don't touch me. Now we know what that means under the old covenant. The priest would wash themselves and make offerings for themselves and put on their special garments and nobody could touch them or they couldn't be defiled by anything when they went into the holy of holies and performed their sacrifice. That's what Jesus is about to do. But he's not about to take the blood of a bull and a goat. He's about to take his own precious blood into the holy of holies. To, for what? For what? To buy us, to redeem us from what? To what? Out of darkness into his kingdom, into his family. Instead of being strangers and foreigners from the covenants of God to be in the very family of God. And you can tell this is front and center on his mind because he said, don't touch me. Don't touch me. I've not yet ascended. Come on, can you read this? I've not yet ascended to my father, but you go to my brother's. And you tell them, I am ascending to my father and your father. <laughs> my God and your God. What's he saying? The way has been made. The way has been made. The enmity has been moved out of the way and I'm taking the final sacrifice for sin right now. I'm taking my blood. I'm paying the price and they'll have just as much access and right to the Father as I do because it's my blood that bought the way. It'll give you the right 
to call him father just like I do. Mm. Oh, the devil wants to jump up and say, oh, oh, oh. No. Don't you dare. You sit down. You shut up. You're just a little shut. Oh. No. 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 But the Bible says, come boldly. Yes. Come bo confidently. Right up to the throne of grace. Why? Because that's your father. That's your father sitting on the throne. It's your brother sitting on his right hand. Mm, 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 mm. Hallelujah. Go back to Romans 8. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they're the sons of God. You, have, you haven't received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you've received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry. Abba, Abba means daddy. Yes. Daddy? daddy? Don't you know the angels about fell out first time they heard one of us come and call him daddy? <laughs> ah, man, I reckon they fell out all over the place. They thought. <laughs> he called the Almighty daddy. Because they have no right to. They dare not. The one that tried to act like a son of God has been cast down. That's why it makes him so mad. Because it's what he wanted. It's what he tried to make happen against the will of God. And it's what he now can never be. What we are. Not trying to be what we are yes. not just what we're going to be yes. what we are yes. we are yes. we are yes. he said the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God and if children then we're heirs heirs of God how many know if you're not in the family you're not an heir we're heirs of God and what? Joint. What? Joint. Surely that's a misprint. No, no. That word joint means equal. Yes. Equal heir? Yes. Huh? Yes. With Christ? Yes. Oh. Wow. Verse 19 says the earnest expectation of the creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. That's what the whole planet's waiting for. It's what the solar system's waiting for. It's what the universe is waiting for. The manifestation of us. The sons of God. Oh, you can't tell it. We haven't acted like it. We haven't looked like it. We haven't sounded like it, but we are. I said, we are. And don't just look at yourself in the mirror and don't just look at your past and go, how in the world could such a thing be? It ain't over. This is just getting started. Okay? Even at the end of this life, it's just, just the beginning. Now, you do believe the Bible, don't you? You believe the Scripture. You know I've been reading Scriptures, right? Here we go. 1 John 3. Are you there? 1 John 3, verse 1. Behold, what does behold mean? If you're in Arkansas, you might say, "Look a here, look a here, look a here, at what manner, what kind of love the Father has bestowed on us." This is a, this is a dramatic. This is a powerful statement. How can I say it differently? Look at the amazing thing God has done for us. Look at how much love and what kind of eternal, unmeasurable love God has shown to us. In, in what? In what? Put it back up. That in that 
we should be called the sons of God. We're not angels. That'd be a demotion. We're not just servants. What are we? Sons of God. Therefore, the world knows us not because it knew him not. They don't see us that way. The problem is we hadn't seen us that way. They look at us and go, what? Who do you think you are? The scripture said Jesus came into his own and his own received him not. But to as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons. Am I quoting John 1, 12? The sons of God. Do you believe on it? Then look what kind of love God has shown on you and me that we should be called the sons of God. Keep on reading. Verse 2. In the sweet by and by, when we all get to heaven, over yonder on the other shore, because right now you're just a worm. You just a lowly. Mm -mm. Uh uh. No. Beloved. Now. 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 Now are we the sons of God. Say it out loud. Now are we the sons of God. God, say it again. Now are we the sons of God. When? Now. 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 God's my father. Jesus is my brother. If God's my father, what would I be? He's God. <laughs> He's God. If I'm really his son, what does that make me? A son of God. A son of what he is. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. You can't tell it yet by looking at us. <laughs> or by listening to us or watching us. A lot of people are not acting like sons of God, but you can. You can begin acting more like a son of God this afternoon. Does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The next verse, verse 3, every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. When you realize who you are and what you are and it becomes real to you, it'll make you live better. Amen. You'll live different. Amen. People abuse themselves. They do bad things because they have no uh, sense of worth or value. They don't like themselves. They despise themselves. They see themselves as nothing, as insignificant, as a failure. And so they let other people mistreat them and they mistreat themselves. But when you realize... I said, when you realize who you are in his eyes and how much he loves you and who you really are and what you really are, it'll clean you up. You'll purify yourself. You'll lay stuff aside and you'll quit acting like a sinner. You'll quit acting like a worm. You'll start acting like a son of God. And when he shows up, when he comes, the Bible said, we're going to be like him. Yes. You're going to be amazed. You're going to be shouting because he's coming. Yes. But then you're going to be amazed about something else. You're going to look at him and go, the Lord's coming. Oh, there he is. Oh, uh-huh. Huh? Huh? 